doing what you wanted. You're not going to hurt my feelings by moving someplace else. Um, but we are going to be building um, an iBook with iBooks author. So if you have your Macs, use them. If you just want to hang out and watch how it's done, that's fine too. Um, I just know that for me, when I'm learning a new piece of software or something, I have to do it. I have to create the thing that's supposed to be created with it before I really feel like I know it. I can't read the directions. I have to do it as I go. And so that's kind of the experience I wanted to give you all today is to actually walk through building most of the elements of an iBook. Um, I guess just a little bit more background about me so you know where I'm coming from with all of this and why I'm excited about it. When the session proposals came out for Podstock, it was about three weeks after Apple released iBooks Author and announced that you can now make your own textbooks. And I was really excited about it. And I wasn't sure, though, if this summer would be too soon for people to be ready to start building their own. Um, looking around today, I think the interest is there. So that's good. If you don't have a Mac, I suggest talking to your principals. If you're a PC district, get one in the building just to make the books work. Because for me, as a former classroom teacher, I taught fifth and sixth grade for a few years, six, I think, um, before getting into this kind of stuff. Um, for me, the exciting thing about this is that you can put everything all in one place. You're not going here and there and there and there to get it all. Those of you who use uh, Promethean and SmartBoard, same kind of thing. You know, I, don't, I don't buy into the Promethean as the, the cure-all. I like it, and I've used the software a lot myself, but most of the reason why I do it is because it saves me so much time I can put all my resources in one place. This does the same thing, but then the kids can walk away with it too. And uh, you can put it online. You can put it on all of those devices that most of them have, or a lot of them have anyway. Um, a quick disclaimer. I apologize to those of you from Texas. I didn't mean any offense with my title, but right when this stuff came out, that's one of the big topics that they were talking about a lot is all of our textbooks are made and, and they're made for Texas because that's whose curriculum, that's who pays the big money for the textbook publishers and it was changing all of that. So uh, it, it's not a, a smash on, on Texas at all. It's, it's the uh, empowerment thing for everyone to be able to put all of your own favorite stuff. Now teachers have been doing this for years, right? You put all of your materials in a PowerPoint, or you put it all, and then something new comes out, and you have to transfer all your files, or remake everything, or whatever. Uh, I still have people in my district using Apple Works, and just refuse to <laughs> move things over. Um, but I'm, I'm working on them because this tool will allow you to pull everything into one place in ways that we haven't been able to do before, and the, the good stuff too, the video and everything else. So, without further ado, um, what you're looking at up here. These and these are the same thing, they're just links. I didn't know, not everyone would have a scanner, so if you can scan it, scan it. If you want to type in a short URL, do that. But we only really have two web pages that I'm going to go off of today. Um, this one just has our, our uh, reference links and things like that. There are other tools you can use to create iBooks, or well not iBooks actually, but EPUBs. Um, you can create digital books with several other tools. It's just that iBooks Author is the easiest of the really powerful ones, in my opinion, and, and I think I'm in agreement with a lot of people on that who use some of the other ones. This one, uh, Sigil, it's a multi-platform, open source um, program that you can download on PC or Mac, I believe, to create books with. It, it's quite a bit more clunky to get around in and try to figure out what you're doing, so I really like the iBooks offer. So again, talk to your administrators and get at least one so you can build your stuff. Um, and then there are a few articles in there too. Seven reasons to learn iBooks Author now. I just kind of gave you my reasons for those. Feel free to read that. There are some comments in that blog too on the contrary side of that. So some good, we like discussion. We're not all one opinion here. So This little media folder though, um, as we're building the book, we're going to be throwing in some things like keynotes and audio files and stuff like that. And if you don't have um, a set of media that you're ready to just play with and use, that's what that's there for. You can download that. It's a zip file. Um, and then it has everything in it that we can use to, to do the examples and stuff today. Okie dokie. And then that other uh, link is to our directions that we'll be using on how to build this. At some point, I may have to go back and forth from iPad to computer, so bear with me. Um, let me know if anybody's having any trouble. If you need to download that, if you're having trouble downloading it, let somebody know so they can work on the network or whatever they need to do. But 
one of the things in your media folder is a Word document version of this and a PDF version of this. Um, and then, of course, you can bookmark the web page too if you like, so that whatever changes are made are updated. There are a few words that are different that have changed just since I made the media folder. So when I say one thing and it says something different on here, it's just like a day in the work. Okay, a couple disclaimers first of all. Before you start uh, building your book, I think it's a good idea to know what kinds of things you can put in it, which we're going to accomplish today, so that you have a, a, a good idea of this would work well there, this would not, those kinds of things. And then you actually get all of your content ready first. So what I would suggest you do is create some sort of a media folder. Um, that. Something that basically is your book's structure by chapter, sections, everything, um, and I'll show you kind of how I have that organized. If you open one of those, there's a media folder in each one. So if I had chapter one and I had a folder in there to put all the media for chapter one, write all of the text in a, a word processor first. You can use pages, you can use Word, you can use Google Docs. Almost everything you're going to do in iBooks Author can be dragged in or copied and pasted. If it's super simple to use, it's like it's kind of like uh, Keynote and Pages. If you're familiar with those programs and you see the interface, if you haven't seen it before, it looks just like those. And it is kind of that WYSIWYG idea. What you see is what you get. If you think you can drag it there, you can. Just try it. So generally what we recommend, though, is it's a lot easier to just assemble your book if all of the content is done already. You know what you want to say, you know what kinds of things you want in the book. Build all of that first, have the file structure there, and then just use iBooks Author to put everything together. So think of it um, rather as an authoring tool, think of it as kind of a, um, an assembly, assembly tool. And I've read four or five different guides and they all said that. So uh, there are some people who just rather kind of shoot from the hip and get going, um, and just start writing the book and go as you go. That's fine too, it will adjust as you make changes, you move a picture around, the text will automatically wrap where it's supposed to go, so either way you roll, it'll work for what you like. Okie dokie. I'm trying to see if there's any other disclaimer kinds of stuff I need to tell you before we get going. You, you probably, before you publish, um, and at the end, I, I want to make sure someone keeps me on track with time, uh, and make sure we save about 10 minutes at the end at least to talk about publishing. There are a couple of different ways that you can publish, and you can publish through the iBook store, but I wouldn't recommend doing that to this group. Um, Smoke, yes, because what we talked about. <laughs> I'm trying to convince Smoke to put some of her projects into a, a book like this and sell it on the iBook store. How many of you here would buy that? If it told you, like, how she came about all the projects, and all that, is, I think that would be a Big no pressure or anything, though. Put hers on the iBook store. For us, See, though... Does anyone want to run an 8th grade class for like a month? We can make that <laughs> Yeah. For, for my purposes, I'm gearing this towards the classroom teacher in me. And, and those of us who are putting content out there for someone else to consume, um, simply because we have it out there anyway and we're going to use it. So when I talk about publishing, I'm talking about putting it out there so that your students can get it, so that anybody can download it, that kind of thing. And then it's easy when you have an update, they just go download the newest one. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but if you are publishing, either distributing yourself or in the iBook store, make sure you read that license agreement stuff with Apple's just to make sure that you don't do something that will get you in trouble. Okie dokie. If you don't already have media files on your computer, go to that link and download them. Uh, that's the first page we showed you. Otherwise, we're ready to get going. Questions or anything before we get started? iBooks Author does require that you have um, OS X Lion. You may even have to have point two or something. Get, yes? No, I downloaded it. And then there's a second version of iBooks Author out already. I think it's been updated once since it came out. If you can't get the uh, the Google pay, Google's quirky sometimes. Even though you put something out there so that people don't have to log in, occasionally it'll still make somebody try to log in with a Google account. If you don't have one and you can't access that, it is in that media folder. 
in both Word format and PDF. So the same directions we're following, you can't get into the Google Doc or in that media folder that we downloaded on the first page. What? <laughs> this page. When you came here, this media folder, when you download that, should have... Here, you want an iPad? Should have tutorial handouts. If you're on an iPad, you can't download it. It doesn't have a file structure or know what to do with that thing. Sorry, I didn't get it. Is there a PDF? The only PDF I have is for download. Otherwise, you just have to go to that. Page. There's a short URL if you just need to get to this instruction page, though. It's, uh, that one. Yeah. R capital B, A capital I capital B. Okay, we ready? And I asked for permission to use the Podstop logo. I don't remember if they ever got back with me, so. I owe you some royalties on the stockers. Okie dokie. We're just going to open iBooks Author. And when you open it up for the first time, this is something like this, template chooser. Some more to keynote pages, all those things. We're just going to use the basic template today, and it's probably better if we all use the same one just because they are all a little bit different, and if you get stuck on a different one, I'm not going to have time to help everybody. Um, I put the instructions out there because some of you guys are just going to be ready to just start reading through instructions and going ahead of us. Feel free to do that. If you get stuck, you might have to wait for us to catch up with where you're at. Um, but otherwise, you know, go right ahead. Start following instructions, tooling around, doing whatever you do. Uh, we all kind of learn these things a little bit differently, and usually it's by playing and messing things up a few times. So go for it. I'm not going to break anything. Okay, so we're supposed to be on um, media folder. Where do you want it? If you want to follow along in the instructions, that's on this Google Docs page. If I can. It's this one. My book's author tutorial. It was the second link on that first page. If you want to follow along or have that open in your browser to keep referencing. Um, but we're going to be switching out of our browser now and going into iBooks Author for the rest of it, mostly. So open up iBooks Author if you haven't yet. And choose that basic template. Now again, just a, a quick word. As you build all of your own media and you're ready to start assembling your book, Take a look at the different templates and see which one lends itself best to your content. You have some different layouts of things, and they're all <coughs> customizable anyway. But if you can get something that fits mostly, that's less work for you. So, so we're going to choose this basic one that says Botany on it. And everybody has the same or some stuff to start out with. So. One of the things that's going to be kind of a recurring theme that you're going to see here is that it does a lot of stuff for you. Similar to most of the Apple programs, it's used to them at all. Um, Apple's programs are made so that you never really have to right click to get to contextual menus. You can still use that. I use it all the time, um, secondary clicks or whatever. But pretty much anything you need to be able to access or do 
is right there in the interface, right there along the top and in those menus. So if it's something you want to put on the page, go to insert and just see if it's there, those kinds of things. But for the most part, we're going to be drag and drop. I mean, just simple stuff. And copy paste. Um, just a word about that stuff. If you have all of your text done and you add all of your images where you want them, you can copy and paste in all of your text and it will automatically wrap around everything that you've assembled in the book already. So when I say it does a lot of stuff for you, it really does a lot of stuff for you. And it's, it'll automatically add the number of pages that you need, um, expand to, to fill the text that you have, all of that stuff. So just to reiterate that a little bit, you know, we have a book title. We're just going to type in another book title. And you'll see it change as soon as I click away from it. You see the title changed up here for me already. Um, it just constantly will keep up with what you're doing. This intro media, uh, if you went to Cindy's presentation yesterday, where'd she go? Cindy. Uh, when you first open some of those books, they have videos and things like that to play. That's what that intro media is. And you seriously just drag a video onto that spot, and drop it off, and then you have intro media when your book opens up. One thing about iBooks Author is it's kind of difficult sometimes to be able to see how it's working. Um, you put something in the book, you're, you're not really sure how that's going to look in the published version. Unless you hit that publish button, you have to have your iPad plugged into your computer, hit that publish button, it'll open up in iBooks. You have to have yeah, iBooks you have open to when preview you do it. Button. Huh? Preview. Preview, sorry. Yeah, I called it publish. Uh, preview and publish are right next to each other, but if you hit preview and your iPad's plugged in, your book doesn't have to be done, it doesn't have to be saved in any format, it'll pull it up and show you what you have done so far and what it looks like. And your interactive stuff interacts, so you can tell how it works on there and what it's going to look like in the end for your uh, readers. But as far as intro media goes... If the title didn't change on the left, you just need to click elsewhere so that it knows you're done. Yeah. Yeah. The, another trick to that, why that's probably happened, when, you're, when you've got a batch of text like that that's the template text, don't delete it first. Double click on it and just start typing. So Because if you delete it first, it kind of screws everything up. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Thanks, Cindy. Um, those, that whole war and Ipsum stuff that you see when you open up Apple programs, it's like a placeholder. And so if you delete it, it no longer knows what <coughs> you want there. And so you have to insert text again <laughs> in order for it to know what it is. And, and I don't know that it's even going to know that that's the book title well, if you insert do text. Do Apple Z or Command Z and back up till it puts the title back in and oh. then type. And if I were doing that and I just did the book title, I'd just start over. Me too. Because, you know, it was only the first step. We're not out much. But yeah, that's a very good point. From this point forward, make sure that you highlight and replace rather than delete the text boxes and delete the placeholders and things like that. Other media, you can just drag in where there wasn't anything before and it just kind of takes care of it for you. Uh, but the text itself, it's better to replace it. Thank you. So I have a video. I'm just going to drag it in there. I wonder if I did that wrong. That's a good possibility. Let's have a green plus. And it shows you the video. You can preview the video itself. You won't see what it looks like when people open up the book for the first time unless you preview it and look at it on your device. But you saw how easy it was to add a video. I take the video from my finder. And I just drag it in and drop it off right there. You get the little green plus wherever it's allowed. Um, a word about that stuff, though. Part of the reason why I made a media folder for you is because even if you have a lot of media on your computer, it's a pretty good bet that you're not going to have it in the right format because it is kind of picky about what you use. Audio has to be M4A, and video has to be M4B. Okay. Um, and it's pretty easy if you, if you have a Mac, it's pretty easy to get things into that format. If you have iTunes, it's easy to get the audio in the right format. Any kind of a track in iTunes, you can just export as that kind of a file, M4A. And it's that easy. You can drag it off your desktop, drag it into your, your book or whatever, and you're done. 
video, I just used uh, QuickTime. I just opened up the video in its raw format. I shot this on an iPad, that Color Run video. It was shot on iPad. I would look for a new version of iBooks Author to come out soon that works automatically with native versions of video from iPad and iPod because it just makes sense that you shoot video on an Apple device, you should be able to drag that video directly into an Apple product and have it work without converting it. So I was a little surprised at that. But. It's not working. You can drag it. It's got to be Or it asks you to. Yeah. That's good to know. And you can always get your iPhoto to all this stuff on the device. You can convert it right from there, export from there. Then there are things like Zamzar that will convert files for you. So, you know, no lack of tools for converting things. But it does need to be in that format. That's good to know before you try dragging it and keep getting frustrated that it won't work. Um, it does contribute to the overall size, though. I mean, and it's obvious. You put a lot of video in something, you're going to have a big file. And so for an iBook, it's not that big of a deal to have a big iBook. I mean, you don't really care. You care more about what the content is, especially if this is for students. However, probably the reason why I shoot video on here and it doesn't just go straight in is because this is HD video and that takes up way more space than is necessary. You can convert this video down and compress it quite a bit and on something this big it looks wonderful. Uh, I'm not watching it on a movie screen so I, I don't, it's not going to be ginormous and pixelated. So that's I think why they make you crunch it down so much because it's going into a little book file and it's going to make that file huge if you don't. Uh, convert it. The table of contents to show you what it looks like. This will fill in for you. You don't even have to mess with it. As you create your titles, and you create your sections, and you name those, the table of contents gets filled in for you automatically. Which is great. And again, uh, when you first start it off, you get a chapter, a section, and a page. So that you kind of see the structure of how things go. And from there, you just keep adding things. Okay, so back to our instruction. We're just going to throw a video. We, we uh, did the title, changed the title. There's a, a picture in that media folder. Several of them, really. One of them is called cover image or something. Any picture that you want, just drag it in there and replace this placeholder image. You don't need to delete that one first. In fact, it's better if you don't because that one is made to be a placeholder. And so if you drag another file in there, another picture file, it will automatically resize to fit that little window, which is also really nice. You don't have to sit there and drag corners for an hour and a half trying to get something this big down to something that big. It automatically does it. Let's show you. Okay, so as I'm going to drag this in here, I'm going to just tell you a word about covers. What does it look like when you open up the iBooks application? What do you see? Page. When, when you open up iBooks Offer, oh, oh, the oh. Page. You, you see a bookshelf with teeny oh. tiny little books on it. Oh, yeah. And uh, you never really do get to see the cover. When you tap on the book, it opens up. And so you're going to need to make sure that whatever is on that cover is big and eye-catching if you want anybody to be able to see it well. Now, if you're just making this stuff for kids and you don't really care about how pretty the cover is, that's one thing, but if it's in the iBook store, be mindful of what that initial cover looks like, because that's what people see when they go to download. So that's why that text is like 150 font or whatever it is. <coughs> it's huge. And uh, the image is large. So we're just going to drag this image in. It automatically changes. I chose an eclipse. <coughs> Lots of dark light. You know, it pops. I got everything in this media. I either made it myself or I got it off of uh, copyright free stuff. So I'm in no violation other than the Podstock image, which I'm still waiting on confirmation. Something. Yeah. Ginger, just say it's talk, okay. I'd love to talk with folks about exercising your fair to use rights. <laughs> just, just say it's okay to use that <laughs> Podstock image. Favorite really topics. Everything else I know is covered. Just take a really good picture. <laughs> so adding pictures into iBooks Author. If you have a picture, it's just that easy. Just drag it in. And that, that's really all you have to do. From there, um, and we'll play with images on some other pages to show you how it wraps text and things like that, but getting started is just that easy. 
Um, so there's our cover. It's, it's done. I suggest changing the title from another title to something better. Okay. <coughs> Am I only on step two? Three? Three. Yeah. <coughs> four. Hey, we're on four. Intro media. No, we already did that. Okay, we're good. I'm all the way to step five. I even remember that. Okay, there is a little bit of a note here. I didn't even remember that I put that there, but it tells you how to export from QuickTime in case you use that. And if you don't put a movie in there, you don't want a movie in the beginning of your book, it's no big deal. Nope. Nothing crazy shows up. Yeah, you don't it see a blank right page with that little yeah. insert media here yeah. file that makes it look like you didn't do your homework. <laughs> it just opens right up to the first page, and, or the first <coughs> table of contents, I suppose it would be. If you do want the video, great. It works well, but otherwise it doesn't penalize you for it. Um, okay, so we talked about the contents. It does it all for you. It says, nice, huh? I like that. Okay, the last item before you get into the meat of your book is the glossary. Um, again, you don't really need to do anything with that for now. As you write your book, you may want to put some things in bold just to make it easier for you to find those later and link those up into the glossary because you can create your glossary from any word or <coughs> phrase or anything at all from within your book. And those become those little study card things that we looked at earlier. I think they actually create their own book. That glossary is really nice. It links things up so that you can shoot to the glossary, look up words, keywords, vocabulary, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the purpose of these, I'm going to show you the easiest way to add terms to the glossary. If you don't see this little bar showing there that says new glossary term, then go to your view menu, I think. Yeah. And it's the show glossary toolbar or hide glossary toolbar. In of all the ways I tried, that was the easiest way to get a term into the glossary is say I want Ipsum in there. Well, I don't think it'll do it with the placeholder text, but. My text instead. That's better. Let's say I want the word instead in the glossary. You see what happens as soon as I highlight that? Instead is added to the new glossary term. And all I have to do is punch that button that says add term. And it will appear in the glossary for me to edit later and add the uh, definition or whatever else I need. <coughs> so I'm going to hit add term. OK, see what happened to the book there? That word looks a little different now. That tells me as I'm writing the book that that is a glossary term. And it will also appear differently to the reader when they're reading the book. It shows that that word is clickable, that it's in the glossary, and when they click it, it'll bring up the glossary for you. Yeah? Once you do that, that particular word, is it going to do that for the same word? No. I do not believe so, no. No, you only just the first time. Uh, can you do it multiple times? Could I link multiple instead's, or would they show up as several They'll show up as separate words. words. Darn. However, if you wanted to take every word in that it says instead and the whole thing and link those to the glossary, I think you can do that with a link rather than the actual glossary so that you can make it good over the page or something. Like that. I didn't try that, so just a good question. <laughs> that reminds me of my social studies textbooks, though. They never did have the word bolded more than once. Once it was bolded once and it said this is a glossary term, it wasn't bolded everywhere else in the chapter either, so I think they're kind of following that same publishing format. Apple didn't break the mold on at least one. Walkie doos. Everybody with me so far? Questions about stuff? So far, good questions. Keep them coming. Ready to move? Let's look at that glass. Oh, you see my little dashboard budget for me? Thank you, Drew, my nightmare. All right, now if I click on the glossary, you'll see, expand this out a little bit so you see the full window. There's our word that we added instead, and here's where we can just simply, again, type over the placeholder text to put what the real definition is. And it will alphabetize that glossary automatically, and all that looks pretty. The glossary pretty much does itself. All you have to do is go in and make sure you change more of it some. 
more rips and more. Everything is different. Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to find somebody who can read that to me and tell me what it says. But you can look it up on Wikipedia and it gives you the history of why they use Laura Mipton to replace older staff. And I didn't bother to read it, obviously. I just saw that it was there and went, oh, that's interesting. There's a reason for that. Now I know. Oops. Switch. All right, so let's begin creating our book. So we've got our chapter titles, all that kind of stuff, cover page, intro media if we want it, good stuff. Now we we'll get to the part that I call the meat. Um, it says, click the chapter one title and replace the title in placeholder text with a few sentences. And then also, so this is your assignment to do this right now. Also change the title of the chapter next to the thumbnail image on the left. And then click the table of contents to see your changes made instantly. So let's do that. Yeah. All right, chapter one. So I'm going to change untitled to my chapter title. Lots of doc rules. Sounds like a good title. See my table of contents over here? Chapter one now says pot stock rules. I didn't have to click that to change anything, just did it. I'm going to replace that image with another one. Another image in here. Did I have one for chapter? Nah, it doesn't matter. Image is image. For our purposes, anyway. Okay. So you see, that time when I dropped an image in, it did behave a little differently. It's probably a good time to talk about your orientation. I think. And there are some differences of opinion on this, but from what I read, people want you to build your book being mindful of both the portrait and landscape layouts. But in my opinion, you should build your book in the landscape layout because that's where all the features are. All of that stuff hides in the portrait layout when you're reading the iBooks in its new format. And so if you build it with that in mind, you're not really building it with anything neat in mind. I mean, it kind of hides all that stuff. You can still get to it, uh, but it looks more like a traditional book that way and build it in landscape mode and then I think you've covered both bases. See what I'm saying? But it does cause you to have to scroll around because your book is laid out longer. You switch that in the orientation right at the top and you can switch between them at any time. You can switch back and forth as many times as you want. I don't think I mentioned this at the very beginning when you pick a theme or a uh, template, you cannot change that. Once you pick it, you're stuck with it. So you make sure you pick the ones you like. So make sure you like the template before you start. <laughs> yeah. Or be willing to rebuild your book. But see, this is why it's really nice to have the book and all of its content made. And really, you're just assembling it so that if something happens, you change your mind, you're just copying and pasting in a different template. It's not recreating the wheel at all. It really goes together pretty quickly when you have everything built first. So, you know, we add a title, we add an image. Both things appear in the thumbnails already. Like I said, it does all this stuff for you. It just kind of, like, hey, did something. Let's change it here. Take care of that for you. Now I have to go back and read what I was talking about. Change the title of the chapter next to the thumbnail image on the left. Ah, yeah, now I know what I'm talking about over here. All right, see the table of contents? 1.1 still says it's untitled. The chapter one has been changed to Podstock Rules. Where is this 1.1 untitled? What didn't I change that says untitled? It's the section, right? So if I come over here to this section, I can either change it here, or you can actually change it next to the thumbnail too, but it wasn't letting me double click on it. Um, that. Automatically change the section. Now look at my table of contents. Automatically does that. So again, you never have to mess with the table of contents. Just build your book. And it takes care of the rest for you. Love that. 
Okay, now your templates are going to come in with some stuff there already. Uh, this is a shape with text in it. If you don't want that, you can just delete it and just add another text box. Your tools are right along the top to add text boxes, shapes, tables. We're going to get through as much of that as we can, trying each one. But a text box is really just as simple as hitting the button and then you just resize it to fit where you want. Apple gives you those little uh, blue lines to tell you when it's centered, when it aligns with other things on the page. It's very nice of them. They've obviously seen houses like mine where things hang on the wall and all kinds of <laughs> strange patterns. I think they look great, and then my wife comes along and goes, so those little blue lines are good. It even tells you if you have the same distance between your paragraphs on both sides of that landscape page. See that little 21 between the center of the book and the start of the paragraph text, or the text box? That way, when I open up my book, it doesn't look like some of the stuff is over here to the left a little bit, and some of it's over to the right, and they don't line up. It keeps everything looking very professional. It's kind of nice. I think we need to add unconference to the dictionary. Postdoc's putting that on the map. So you just type to enter the text. Blah, 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 blah. And you notice even in the little thumbnail image, everything that shows up over here, <coughs> yeah. left side, changes as you do it. It's great. It's a lot like PowerPoint or something that way where, where's that slide I was looking for? You don't remember what chapter or section or whatever it's in, but you can kind of see the preview on the side. You know it's the one with the picture of the Ferris wheel, so you just go right to the page. But anyway, I gotta love that table of contents. I was one of these people and whenever we had to do outlines in school, I was always, ah, if I had one little eye, I'd have two little eyes. Why? There's only one point. And I freaked out about outlines and stuff, so building a book and putting it in this, that under it, and that just kind of, I don't like that stuff, but it does it for me, so. Thank you. What's next on our list? How many of you are working ahead of us? Has anybody gotten to something really cool that they're like, woohoo? Okay, well, work ahead. I want to hear a Just randomly, when we're talking about something else, I want to hear somebody go, woohoo! Find something. Alright. Yeah, and as it says here, you can begin to see why it's better to have all this stuff planned out in advance. You just drag stuff in, flop it off. Uh, let's look at text wrapping real quick. I did not put text on this page. So I'm going to add an image to this side so that we can look at how stuff moves around. Image two. Drop it off right there. Okay. So I just dragged an image onto this page. And there was no placeholder this time, so the image is not the right size. So I do need to resize it a little bit. There's a little tip in the directions there that tell you about I think what is it, holding the shift key while you drag any one of those will keep the aspect ratio the same, but otherwise you always have to be careful to get that one in the corner that's diagonal so that it keeps your ratios of height and width the same so you don't distort pictures. Do you see how that text is reacting? As I move things around, it instantly changes. And you have total control over how that happens and whether it happens and all of that in your inspector. So you have the tools along the top, and then the only other thing I'm really going to throw out there that we're going to use for everything else is this inspector. And again, if you've used other Apple programs, it's a very familiar little tool. This is where you go to mess with all of the things, all of your media, all of the text, all of that stuff, all of the formatting, any of those properties of things. That's what your inspector is for. So you have text formatting stuff, you can control everything about um, how it aligns, whether it wraps. You can even use the shapes tool to, if I wanted to have a little star, like as a cutout, with that image showing in the star, you can do that with the shapes tool and the text wraps around the star image. There's a lot you can do, so you have pretty much full control of how you want things to look. But I just wanted to show you how you can throw an image in, 
and just by dropping it off, your text will automatically scoot around. And you see another page has been created there too? Is that text was too long and it spilled over onto another page, just made another page for it. No need to plan that out or worry about how many pages it is. Change the size of your font, pages shrink or multiply, whichever is needed, to make room for all your words. Can you turn Fantastic. the hyphenation off? Sorry? Can you turn the hyphenated words off? Hyphenated words off. I bet you can. Let's see. Help me look for that. If you look under document and inspector, it's right there where you either hyphenate or use literature. Look under what? Under document inspector. There it is. Hyphenate with the checkbox. Excellent. Thank you. Nice. It's been, what's a ligature? I have no idea. Anybody know what a ligature is? Yeah. It says use ligatures. Yes, I do. That was a long explanation. Yes, you want to use them. Trust me. Pardon? Put it in the glossary. Ligatures. And then I'll just leave it lower mipsum because I don't know what it is. Add that to my list of things to Google later. It's a publishing thing. It's a publishing thing. That's a good explanation for me. Require password to open. Ooh, never saw that little feature before, but that can Where? be handy. Where are you? Differentiated instruction. Let's see if I had a book specific to certain kids. Have to have a password to open. After they were <laughs> I don't know where you're at with that, but it's kind of fun just to drag images around, drag them in, drag them around, just kind of see how the text interacts so that you know. It makes you feel a lot more comfortable that you're not going to make a goof when you see it doing everything cool. You're like, okay, great, it's going to take care of my goofs this morning. So do that for a minute and it makes you feel a little bit better. Then we move. Next. Okay, as it says uh, in, in this part of the tutorial, it talks a little bit more about the inspector. I don't know that I'm going to like teach you the inspector or what's in it, other than just messing with some of the things that we're going to put in there and playing with its properties. But working with text is pretty straightforward, and what you expect it to do, it generally does. It will even pleasantly surprise you, as you've seen with some of the things it does um, in moving around for you. But Color, alignment, spacing, margins, tab spacing, um, line style, borders, backgrounds, all of that stuff. So if you've ever worked with any kind of a word processor, what you might expect to be able to do with the text, you can do with this. With very, very few exceptions. I didn't find anything I wanted to do that I wasn't able to, other than maybe a limitation on what kinds of fonts copied over well when I copied and pasted from, say, uh, OpenOffice. I don't have Microsoft. I use OpenOffice, it's free. Um, and when I copied and pasted my particular font style I used, I had to change that. But it still didn't come in in wing bang or anything goofy like that. It just came in in like plain text and I had to change it to something else I like. So that's the only thing I found working with text that I wasn't able to do was copy a particular font from one program into this. But, um, just a little publishing thing. Especially if you're working with kids, consistency is good. Try not to use a whole bunch of different fonts. And maybe I'm preaching to the choir. You guys tell your kids that when you think about the PowerPoints. Please don't put 15 different fly-in features and animations. Let's we'll stick to a couple and make it look professional. Same kind of thing with us when we're publishing. We want to have a couple of different fonts, a couple of different styles, just to highlight different things. So maybe every time they see this particular font, they know that's a caption. Or they know that this is a little breakout story that is your excitement builder at the beginning of each chapter or something like that. But you know, if you want to use some different fonts to kind of signal kids to different uh, purposes in the text, great. But like we tell them, let's stick to a couple just to make it not look like it's all over the place. Um, oh, good word about that. If you do need to add more text boxes, you can link those so that when you paste text in, it flows over into the next text box. Um, and that's just like all those other programs, two pages, things like that. Um, but basically, you just select an existing text box, text box, and then click that little small blue arrow that appears in the top corner. I'll show you that. And it tells you, this is how great 
my book's author is, it knows that I'm kind of a moron. And it will tell me what to do. I need to get that out of my way. I'm going to add another. There's an existing text box. Where's the little blue corner? There's a really great free book, free PDF book from O'Reilly Publishing called Publishing with iBooks Author, and it's free. It's a 152-page book. It's from O'Reilly, and it's called Publishing with iBooks Author. It's free. It's really good. There are a few pretty good ones, and um, I think I looked at three different ones, and the, the one that I thought was really the best was not free, but it was from Trailer Park Publishing. And it's called like building with iBooks author. I start. I don't know. It's one of the like first ones you'll see when you go there and look at iBooks. Sorry. Trailer Park Publishing is here. Oh, there it was. I saw my little blue arrow. It was there. There it is. Aha. I was clicking in the wrong text. There was a text box underneath my text box. Anyway, once you find that elusive little blue arrow, and you click on it, it tells you exactly what to do to create another text box and link them together. So, I like that. Now if they would only put something on the page that says, in case you're trying to get that little blue arrow, here's a <laughs> Yeah, I think my mistake was, see where that little arrow is? It's on a text box that's not that text box. It was the placeholder text, I think. Maybe that's the issue. All right, I'm going to But you know, if you've been using pages, it's the same in pages. So yeah, you probably I'm not real good at pages either, so that yeah. probably explains a lot. I do what I have to do. And I'm an expert on that that day. Um, all righty. So you can do that. OK, so at this point, you have a chapter, a section, and a page. If you pasted some text in, you may have even had some additional pages get created automatically for you. But they appear on the left side of the screen. They look just like an outline, um, familiar format, easy to find stuff. Now we're going to add a section and a page to this second chapter. I think I may have skipped where we add a, add a chapter. Yeah. Add another chapter by clicking the Add Page button. OK, we're like this. So it comes up automatically with one chapter and one section. 
but my book has eight chapters and a bunch of sections in it. And so how do we get that stuff? Well, there's a little button right at the top called Add Pages. And you just click it and you decide whether it's a chapter, a section, or pages. And each one of those has some different layouts that you can choose. So if I want my chapter to have a big placeholder image in it, I choose that one. If I want my chapter to have a bunch of text in it, I choose that one. Section, same thing. You have different layouts you can choose. And again, pages. You have different numbers of columns you can have in it. So you choose what works best for you. Right now, I'm going to choose a new chapter. You see, it just adds it. And when you go to add chapters and pages and things like that, if I want to add pages in chapter two, you better click on chapter two when you add the pages, or else it'll add the pages somewhere else. And I'm pretty sure that they can just be dragged around, reordered. Yeah. See, that? I didn't even know that, but I thought, you ought to be able to drag it. And you can. So even if you mess up, you can just drag your pages around and change. And that changes the table of contents, too. So it's, it will uh, do a lot to keep you from messing things up too badly. So I've got a chapter two. There's always more than one way to skin a cat, right? So again, you can go to add pages up here at the top, or right there in that little drop down next to the chapter itself, you can add, oh, no, maybe not here. Okay, so you can change the layout after you've chosen it. Uh, you can go to insert and choose pages that way, and the same choices are there. So again, you always have more than one way to do things. So I'm going to add another section, another page. You don't want to add all that stuff. You don't have to. I'm just showing you how easy it is to do. And we're going to put some things on those pages. If you just want to play with the things that we're playing with on the same page, that's fine too. Uh, we're going to throw some different widgets into this and see how they work. All right, so I've got chapter two, section one, and a blank page. And I've got some sandbox area to play with. Hey, set All right. I think we're on step 11. One little disclaimer it has there in case you're not reading the directions as we go. Once you have everything built outside of the book and you're ready to assemble it within iBooks Author, they recommend that you paste all of the text in first. So go to your chapter one, paste in all of your text and your sections and all that. Go to chapter two, section one, whatever, paste in all of your text for that section. When you're done with all of the text part, then go in and drag your media in. Because like we showed you already, the text will take care of itself and move around and make room for the media. Um, but doing it backwards sometimes is a little bit more confusing or problematic. I don't know that it caused me any problems trying it, but then I didn't have pages and pages of content I was pasting in. Andy, can I ask you a question about that? Yes. Um, let's say I'm typing that part in Word. Does it need to be a certain format to make nope. it pretty? Or does it automatically reformats it all? So even if I'd done a double spaced it would Most of the time, it comes over. over exactly as you put it. Yeah. Unless it's not supported, like that font I was using in OpenOffice. Like if you go up there and you go, file um, in iBooks Author. If you go up to uh, edit, edit. See where it says paste and match style? Uh, paste and match style will paste it in exactly the same. Okay, thank you. And that, that takes your italics and bolds and all that stuff, matches all that. Um, but just typing, say you typed it in Comic Sans and you just copy and paste that, even without matching the style, it should still copy the same style. Okay, thank you. But it won't have all of the bold metallic and stuff like that. Good question. All right. Now, we're going to throw some stuff in. Okay, we're going to choose any page in your book, drag an image into it. And then we're going to do some crop mask stuff. See that? I told you you can make like little stars and have the text wrap around it. Little things like that you can do. Um, as you're dragging it, an image into the page. Let's 
just tell you a little bit more about what we're doing and then we'll go do it. Um, cropping is one thing, masking is another. So when we talk about these terms, cropping is where you kind of cut off part of the picture. You know, uh, your ex-husband, <laughs> take him out, <laughs> just put you in there. Um, or the masking is, is like this. This is a mask. And it acts sort of like a crop does, but it really just sort of applies this you know, pinhole type thing over your picture until you have it set the way you want. <coughs> There's that little tip. If you hold shift while you drag any image handle, it's just like holding that diagonal one at the bottom from one. So if you don't want to have to look for that little diagonal one that will keep the aspect ratio the same, the same. When you're using your computer and you hold the shift key while you drag, even the ones on the left, right, top, or whatever, it'll do the same thing. Alright, so let's get me picture. Yeah, solar system, that looks good. I'll drag that. It's a good one to use a mask on. We'll just focus on like inner planets or something like that. Working with this image, I'm going to go ahead and hit that inspector that you have too, so that it lets us do things with it. So I'm going to choose an oval in this case. So I want to pick the inner planets. So you see how this allows you to change the mask? You can make the mask bigger or smaller by adjusting the size of the image. And then you move the image around behind it. That's a little weird to get used to at first. Okay, Auntie, have you ever used the instant alpha tool? Uh-uh, what's that? Oh. <laughs> That's like enhancing the image with one click, right? No, but like you want to get rid of that old, that black background. Uh -huh. If you would add the instant oh, alpha yeah, that's tool, right. you can immediately erase the solid black background there. Have you ever gone out and got a piece of clip art? You got to put it on something that's got that white box around it. You want to get rid of it. You want to make it transparent. Instant alpha does it. it bang. Instantly. <laughs> it's the coolest tool. You still have to go in and kind of fine tune those little pieces. Yeah. But, uh, is that but when you click off of that, where, where is, where's the um, it's in the same thing where you go to okay. format. Go to go to customize tools under view. Find your custom tools. So you choose the image first, and then you go to format and choose uh, image. And instant alpha is right there. And it, again, it's, there's always more than one place to get to everything. Right. 
you need to remove colors. But if you go to uh, view and go to customize toolbar, you can add the instant alpha tool up on your toolbar. Yeah, and, that's, and it, it works better that way. And a good time to mention that you can pretty much customize everything in the interface. What's showing, when, where you want it. I mean, highly customizable. So I'm going to choose mask with shape and oval. I'm going to try to get this right. Add it selected. Good. Be real careful. You can move the image, but then the image behind it is what's the tricky part to move around. Science people, do the inner planets include the first four or just the first three? Four. Four? four. Mars is there too? Yeah. Mars, yes. All right. Well, my oval's too small then, so I need to adjust that. <laughs> Got to get Mars in there. So yeah, that's that's a little weird to play with at first, but you can you can get it. So then, once you're ready, now it's set. Now it all moves together, and it just kind of sticks that way. And so it sort of ignores everything else that's there and puts it in that background. So when you put text in, it wraps around that shape. So you know, some ways I might use this is if I'm putting something in the book about teaching kids about going to this website or like how to use our class website. Go to this part and I would mask that so that it only showed that part of the website or something with a screenshot. You just take a screenshot, drag the image in. Images are super easy. They don't have to be in. It's not real picky about formats for images. You can drag all kinds of things in. Uh, the PNG format, that's the default when you take screenshots on Mac, works, works wonderfully. So you can take screenshots of stuff bring it in here, mask the part so that it highlights what you want them to see, and then make it a little easier to focus attention on one part or another. So that's fun. It can be pretty useful. Okie dokie. We're going to add a table, or we can skip that. Any one of these things we can skip if enough of you want to. I really don't care which ones we talk about. Some are a little bit more... Mm -hmm. A table's a table, I guess, if you work with those much. It's not much different here. Um, charts, same kind of thing. If you work with them, it works the same here. But there are some other things that are pretty neat that this does that other things don't. So, In fact, I might put time 2.33 and go to 3. Yep. I'm going to skip some of that stuff and go to some of these others that are a little bit more. Woo! One thing that's kind of different about charts, though, these are your widgets. Uh, this, if I said that there was something about iBooks Alpha that made it kind of different than most of the other things that are out there, it's the widgets that you can put into your books. And they're right there in the middle. Um, and then you have a widget, we have charts, tables, and shapes. I would call those kind of like widgets, too. But then you have this specific widget button where you can add all kinds of things, a gallery, uh, how many of you have seen iBooks, uh, iBooks before that had some of these elements in them? So you kind of know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Some of you are completely new to them. Never even looked at one of the textbooks or anything like that. Okay. The galleries, it's an image, but you can swipe through and see more than one image without leaving the page. Or... I'm going to use this blank page and we're going to just mess with widgets on this page. Somebody started asking a question. Okay. Let's go to widgets and just hit gallery. Automatically, you get a little thing popping in on the screen. And guess what you do to add images to it? Just drag them in. So I'm going to go get some images. And I've even conveniently labeled them for you. Gallery 1, I think. Gallery 2. So just in case... These are the ones that I use. Okay, gallery one, going in. See the little green dot, or the green plus? It means you can drop that there. So there's one. Gallery two, drop that off. Gallery three, drop that off. Yeah, you can do it all at one time. Yeah, you can hold shift and select them all, drag them all in at once. It's all good. So you've got your images in there. I'm going to preview the book here in a minute. I want to make sure I have something in here. Okay. 
So we have a gallery and it has four images in it. You can edit those images, you can change the size of this thing. It doesn't really matter though because when you're in the iBooks application itself on the iPad, you can expand these things to make them larger. But if you want to make it big initially, great. Um, but you click these little arrows and see what order things are in. You can hit your inspector button and it automatically will let you rearrange the order that things are in. You can oops, quit highlighting it. Brad, what? Oh, sorry. You've got to drag the right spot. You want you to drag those little lines. But yeah, you can reorder things. You hit the little plus or the minus to add or remove them. And you can even add descriptions that, if I remember correctly, those descriptions will be spoken when you tap on or something like that. I just remember thinking I didn't need to know too much about that because if I had a visually impaired student tapping on an image, it wouldn't do them much good anyway. But I, maybe I was thinking wrongly about that. I'm not sure. But I think it will speak whatever you put. Yeah. For that reason, buddy. Tap something in and have it. Or even if it's going to read it, you could put stuff that you want it to say to them. The inner planets are. <laughs> Don't forget Mars. So I'm going to preview this now just to show you what previewing looks like. I want to know what this gallery is going to look like for the readers. So here are the steps. Plug in your... Oh, I can't plug into both at the same time, can I? I have an Apple TV. Darn. I wonder if I have another book in there that I can show you what these look like. I plug into the projector, I can't plug into my laptop at the same time. So. That would be the issue. Did everybody get a gallery in there to mess with? Just for fun? So you're plugging the computer into your iPad? You're supposed well, to do? Yeah, what you're supposed to do to preview is plug in your charging cord, your dongle, whatever you want to call it. Plug your iPad into your computer. Even if it Wi-Fi syncs, you still have to plug it in for the preview. Open up iBooks Author, and then hit the preview button, and it will basically just... And your book will stay on your iPad even after you disconnect it. It just won't have the updates until you plug it in again. Oh, true. Okay. And it's not really published, it's only on your iPad. Yeah, you're the only one who can see it. So it's just going to give me a uh, list of devices to choose. Pick selection so I think I know which one to pick. It says make sure iBooks is open, say OK, and it's going to just take a second and tell me that it's preparing, and then when it's ready, my iPad will automatically open right up to that book, and then I'll switch. OK, so it says it's ready. There it goes on here, updating preview document, just so I can get this unscrewed fast enough. There's our sample. Um, I wanted to play that intro media, so let's see if I can get it to do that. Okay, see how it says proof on it? I'll let you know that nobody else can really see it. It's just all proof. Um, but this is what I was talking about with things being on the shelf. It better be big or you can't really see it. But. This is the one I was telling you about that I like. It's $1.99. Yeah, it's cheap, and it is a very good guide. It talks about stuff that I'm leaving out. Which one did you just put in? Uh, iBooks Author, the Definitive Guide. That's that Trailer Park Press one. Is the one that you're talking about up there, too? Yeah, that red one. That one, publishing yeah. with iBooks Author. That's the free one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I read them both, and I liked the one I paid for better, which I guess is a good <laughs> thing. If you pay for it, I'd rather like it better. <laughs> Could be a class. What? 
That one's free. This is our proof, so I'm going to click that and see if it does. Oops. That's funny. I'm going to the computer. So it's going to play my intro media. It's a little iPad video from the Color Run. You guys know about the Color Run? My wife and my nine year old ran in, that in uh, Kansas City a few weeks ago. <laughs> An iPad's a good camera to have because when that was done, it was coated in colored cornstarch. But it just wipes right off, no damage. Cool times. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. That's a great, I mean, this is the first 5K they've ever ran, and they, they won't do any more now because they're like, all the other ones are going to be boring. That was <laughs> so there's our intro media. You see what your book looks like when you when you first open it up. It just plays whatever intro media is in there automatically. You don't have to control anything. And then it goes right to your table of contents where you can choose a section, chapter, whatever. Well, let's look at this gallery. We put a gallery in somewhere, didn't we? Last page. There it is. So this says Gallery 2.1. It automatically labels things for you. Of course, you can change all the titles and all of that stuff. And if you just tap it, it goes full screen. These happen to be very tiny images. <laughs> These are just tiny little screenshots of the buttons that were on the top of your screen in iBooks Author. But if I swipe through here, I have four images now. And so there's image two. There's image three. There's image four. And because it's on an iPad, you can pinch and all that stuff to blow stuff up and look at it bigger if you want to. But, you know, just hit that little X top and you're right back out to your book. So that's what the, the gallery is really good if you have more than one picture to show of something. Um, if you wanted to, like the example I saw in the biology book or something was talking about, maybe it was, it was a science book for sure. It's talking about different environments. And so they had an arid environment and they had a rainforest and they had and each one had its own little caption under it that it kind of explained that biome or whatever. So, map, put some different examples in there. Flip through them, or step one, <coughs> flip step two, flip step three, all in one gallery. <coughs> so now we know what it looks like. <coughs> all of your media is interactive when you put it in there, so Charts can be blown up, manipulated. All right, I had a gallery. Now I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with the next widget. We did a gallery. Media, same type of stuff. That's going to be. Uh, it automatically goes to your media browser too. Should. Yeah. You have that little media browser. You can pull in anything off your Mac. You can drag it from anything in your. Uh, um, finder as well. The things that I tend to store my stuff in different places than where Mac likes to look for. I don't know why. Weird, but so when I hit media, all I get are like iPhoto and iTunes, and my music files might be someplace else. So it's nice to know you can just pull open any other thing where you had stuff stored and just drag it in. Pretty much any location. So even though that says Movie 2.1. When you add a widget and you add media, you can put an audio file in there too. Um, it just gives you a different kind of a player when you go to play it. <coughs> a couple of these things I want to point out real quickly. Well, the, these last three widgets, in case we don't have time to do all of them. The reviews are great. That's You can put reviews in um, any place in your book. Um, Generally, they go at the end, but you can put them anywhere. And they are interactive. It will grade your quiz for you. You can check your right answers. You can, and there are a few different kinds. I'm going to put in a review. I don't think we need to talk a whole lot about adding media. You drag it in. Um, the only thing you need to know, I guess, is that it be in the correct format. But I think there's something in the instructions that says how to do that in iTunes for audio and how to do it in uh, QuickTime for video or any number of other tools. Pretty much just Google convert to M4A if you need to know how and you'll get a billion results. Let's add a review just to look at how shenanigans that is. Some of the time, you, uh, as far as the keynote stuff goes, the reviews will do some of the things that are pretty neat. 
but sometimes you want things to be more interactive. Uh, for example, I tap this and it plays this sound or something like that. You can build all of that in a keynote, import the keynote, and the keynote operates within the book the way that it's supposed to operate. So if you tap that and this flies in, or if you click on this composer's name and it plays a 30 second piece, you can set all that up in Keynote and just drag the Keynote file in and bam, it's all interactive right there in your book. And there really isn't any other way to make that happen in the book without putting it in a Keynote. So there are lots of ways that you can get things to do what you want it to do by using some of the other programs that are just natively compatible. Just drag it in and it works. But these reviews are pretty snazzy. Show you the different kinds of things. Pretty familiar with this one, right? That's you know multiple choice. Woo! And you get the lower on Ipsum. So you just type in your question. You type what your answers are. You make sure that the correct answer is checked. This does not show up for them. <laughs> they don't see the correct check mark. But what they get is the review with the question. They choose the answer and they click check the answer and it shows them whether they're right or not. And then they can clear it so that the next time they go through, their answers aren't left there. They have to try it again to see what they remember or whatever. Uh, but just to take a look, two, three, four, five, or six different answers options. So you can have multiple choice up to six items. Um, you can have this stuff there so that it will read it to them. What else is listed there? It says a question. Oh, OK. So I can type something different for the question and for each answer so it will read aloud each part. And then to add more questions, say I want a review with four questions in it and I want each of them to be a different kind, very easy. Hit the plus sign and I get a selector. Do I want multiple choice? Do I want multiple choice with a picture on the side? Do I want multiple choice with a picture on the top? You have a lot of options, right? Do I want multiple choice with just four images? And then we start getting into some really neat stuff where you have drag a label to the target or drag a thumbnail to the target. And those do just what they say. I can put a picture in, let's say drag label to target. Say that solar system picture. I can drag that solar system picture in and it gives me a number of labels just like multiple choice. If I choose four, it gives me four. And I can label these Saturn, Uranus. Uh, <laughs> 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 a top fifth grade, I can't help it. Uh, if I didn't laugh, they would, so I had to do it first. Uh, you know, just label four of them or something. And you have the labels, and basically what the review is then is you have little dots, and you put the dots on your picture where you want them, and they have to drag the label to the correct <coughs> dot, and then check their answer. So great uh, higher order thinking kind of thing where you have to classify or sort stuff. So let's do one of those. Drag labels to targets. See this background part's blank. I need an image there. And there's media hiding out. Images. Let's choose. I'll just pick this one. Works for me. Picture's a little large. Oops, it didn't go into the widget, so I may have to try that again. Drop it better. Hey, come back here. Need to drop it right in there where I see that little green. I should have looked for the green plus sign. There we go. The blue box lit up, so I know it's going to drop it in the right spot this time. See how it automatically resizes it and thinks. So I, by default, get two labels, which I can move around. I can manipulate where those labels go, and then I can change what they say. Let's make this real easy and say water. And this one will be keeping it really simple. Sky. So right here you can change whether that's two labels or up to six, just like multiple choice. And again, you have the accessibility options to make it read aloud the things, put your question in there, all of that good stuff. You just highlight and start typing to change things. Where are the sky and the water? <laughs> that would fit in better with the pod stock theme of the 
60s where you might not remember anything. You <laughs> <laughs> too many drugs, Mr. Hanson. So, I almost want to preview this again to show you what this looks like in the. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to plug it in and hit preview again or else it will not update the last one that I had on here. So bear with me for a moment. It doesn't take very long until you start getting a humongous book in there. And I just downloaded and installed that book for $1.99. I agree with Andy. I just looked at it real quick, but it's really good. It was very well written. It's very well done. And it walks you through step by step explaining. And it was done really in well. iBooks Author, so it gives you a good example of what a book looks like done in it. Sorry? Say the name of that book again. Uh, yeah, I'll show it to you when I get this back on. Updating the preview document. Alrighty. Now, here's cheaper. It should be a lot easier with Apple TV and a good Wi-Fi signal. All right, there we go. So there's our review. Hold on a minute. I'm going to back out to the library because you wanted to see that book. It is publishing with, no, that's not it. It's called iBooks Author, the one with the uh, colored spine on the left. The Definitive Guide. Got it? All right, let's go back into our book and check it out. It should play that intro media again. You can stop that. Skip it this time, I don't need it. Uh, and let's go to our review. So here's our multiple choice question. I don't even remember what the answer was. I marked it as one of these. So you see how it pops up and says check answer now? So I hit the button to check the answer. I was right. <laughs> and now I can clear the answer so that next time it's not there for me. And there's a little button there to go to the next question. So here's my next question where it says, where are the sky and the water? Now again, if I need to blow that up, you can kind of blow the whole thing up a little bit. I should have made the widget bigger. That's why we preview, right? The student's going to need that a little bit bigger. So I've got water and sky on the bottom, and I have to drag them to the right point on the picture. So I'll drag sky up here, and I'll drag water over there. Oh wait, I changed my mind. And it switches them. See, so it's totally interactive, lets you do it. Check your answer, and I get red X's this time because I don't know the difference between the water and the sky. Back to preschool I go. So we're gonna you can try again. What? Yeah. Very quiet. One of my kids did not pass their swimming this summer. It was a big deal at our home. Yeah. He has a legitimate complaint, though, because you go to the pool to practice and they yeah. kick you out of the yeah. lat school. Um, yeah. like, how am I supposed to practice my strokes? Is <laughs> Kits is arguing from his dad. Oops. This one. Oh, Andy. Andy. Yep. You have about five minutes. Five minutes, sorry. Five minutes. Thanks for that. Um, so you want to know how to publish. Once I build this whole book and get it all built, I need for my kids to be able to get it on their device. So there are a few different ways you can do that. I think the easiest is simply to make a file that they can download. I read, and I didn't try this, but I read, so I'll just tell it to you, that if you email the iBooks file to them, and they're on an iPad, they open it up in their mail application on the iPad and they click that link that it will open in iBooks. It will. It works. Okay. It was right from the Apple site, so if it doesn't it will work, work. Then... It works. Okay, good. <laughs> Thought I'd share that with you even though I didn't try it. The easiest thing to do here is just go to iBooks Author, uh, File, sorry, Export. It's like everything else in Apple. You export it, you get it out someplace else in another format. When you hit Export, it will automatically suggest that iBooks is the format that you want to use. So just say, yes, that's right, that's what I want. And say next. And it will export your book in a .iBooks format. You get to title it. You get to tell it where you want it to go. And from there, you can put it on your website for kids to just click and download. You can send it to them in email. If they have the device, they can open it up on their mail application and it opens right up. You can, uh, sorry? You don't have to upload it to iBooks if you do it through the mail application. 
what I would do if I had like a cart, for example, is I would take that file and drag it into iTunes and then sync it to all the devices. So then it's in all of their iBooks libraries. Oh, the mail. Uh, you just attach the book in an email to the student. From this point here. From, not from here. When, once it's exported, I just send them an email and put that, put that book as an attachment. Nope. And you don't have to. And for my purposes as a classroom teacher, I would probably never publish anything to the iBooks library unless I wanted someone to be able to get it there. I would use a web page anyway, and so. So what would you suggest if your classes have um, laptops? I mean, you don't need iBooks author if you have laptops. You don't need what? If they, they have laptops, they can't read laptops. the iBooks in the iBook format anyway. It's so you would save it as only. a different format? I wouldn't use this, no. probably. This is for iPads only. I, iBooks only makes books that are for uh -huh. iBook in the iBooks program. If they were had laptops, I'd make it in pages. Yeah, and publishes a PDF or something like that. But then you lose all the interactivity. Yeah, that, the whole point of doing everything with iBooks Author is that you can have all of that interactive stuff, and video and audio and any other media you want, all on a device that they access and have full interactive control with on this. A laptop can still pull up iTunes though, right? So if you yeah. put it into iTunes, yeah. then it can still. But you can't read the book in iTunes. You can only read it on an iPad. It's one of those period end of conversation things. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And I assume that that's going to expand. I've heard that in October, Apple may come out with a new device that is a school friendlier version of iPad that's smaller and about $200. It would allow a lot of schools to start buying lots of these. We've been hoping for that for a couple of years and they keep announcing something else. But there's one particular company that's almost always right about speculations about what Apple's going to announce next, and that's what they're saying they're going to do in October this year, is a 199 7-inch iPad. And if they did that, and iBooks software works on it, you're going to have a lot more kids with devices, and a lot more accessibility to these books that you're building. But yes, once you have this file, this is just like a Word document or anything else, you just have to have the right doc the right thing to read it with. That's an iPad only right now. Yeah. Not iPhone. I don't think iPhone. Yeah, you have iBooks on. If they well, yeah, you have iBooks, iBooks, but I don't know if the new version of iBooks works on those devices too. I haven't tried it. I have an iPod Touch fourth gen. I don't. I don't know if it works on that. Yeah. Uh, if, the, uh, if you install the iBooks app. Yes. The newest. Yes. They will open. Number two, whatever it is. Cool. The only trick with some of those, though, yeah. is that they're so small. It's so small. A lot of the interactive stuff, like those labels, you wouldn't even be able to see yeah. those really. You could edge those out as much as you really wouldn't be able to see those. Curious if you could put that on set as Modo. You have it like oh, yeah. you could try it. You don't work with it. Anything that you put, if, if it's, you can download the file from Edmodo, right? If you can put it on Edmodo so that it's downloadable. See, but the file extension is dot iBooks. And I don't know whether Edmodo will let you put a dot iBooks on there. I haven't tried it yet. You know, about everything else, what on I would do is I would put this on my web page and put a link to it. Just like I, I did for the media. I would guess it'll let you, but. And then no matter, you know, and then in Edmodo, you could put that link in there. Yeah. Whatever facilitation you want to use, link to that file. Even if it's not publicly available on a web page that anybody sees, as long as that file extension works, right. or that HTML hyperlink works, you're good. Not that last one. Yes, up until you say I'm retaining your record. Uh, there are a number of ebook curation tools that you can use that will allow you to publish for all the kinds of format things. But the trick is that interactivity. Yep. So you have to use a lot of different kinds of software. Yeah. 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 Yes, right now. And it's even more specific than that you have to use a laptop that has the latest version. Right. Which I, yeah. I, 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 I,
We added that to the web description, but it wasn't on the printed materials. Yeah, it went in last session starts at 3 30. Uh, remember tonight at 7 10 is the reception slash dance slash yes the prom so um i was told to tell you there's a lot, going to be a lot of food there one last thing, guys. I, I plan to keep on messing with this a lot. So if you want to email questions as you try things or as you get stuck or whatever, or if you just have general questions, go ahead and email me because it'll keep me fresh and try and do things.